Hey there everyone and welcome back to Game Vine and my name is David and today we're going to be taking a look at another Dice Master set. I believe that this one is the sixth one, don't quote me on that, but this one is another Marvel and this is the Age of Ultron. Now, I know I'm a little behind the times which is why I'm trying to get more videos out. You're going to see a lot more Dice Master videos coming in the future, back to back so I can get caught up. Uh, but this came out during the hype of the actual movie, go figure. Uh, now, this is another set, like I said, of Marvel, and they have branched out so far what I've shown you, Turtles, Yu-Gi-Oh, um, D&D, DC, and this is the third Marvel set to be introduced. Uh, this does offer a little bit more, but again, it doesn't convolute too much. It takes some of the old and brings a little bit of the new, but still retains the Dice Master goodness. But does that mean I like it more than the other sets? Where would I rank it? You know that I love Dice Masters, and if it's in dice form uh, via Dice Masters, I'm going to like it. But where does it fall in the lineup of how much I like it. So, without further ado, let's go into the Age of Ultron uh, Dice Master set, and I'll show you the dice, and then I'll show you some of the cards. Uh, what I do want to say, that we're not going to be doing a, a um, playthrough, there is a video on our channel that you can learn how to play. Again, I'm just going to show you what came out in this set, and tell you what's new. This one I didn't get too much on, maybe about half a booster pack, uh, no, a gravity feed, and I did get the starter set, so you will see that. Let's go check out those dice now. All right, so the dice uh, this time around are pretty clear. There's a lot of them that I like. Uh, you have um, the starter dice, and I'm gonna show you a picture right here, what you get in the starter pack. It's been so long, I forget. So right here, here's a picture. These are the cards that you get. These are the dice that you get along with enough to play two players. Now let's look at the dice. I would say they're a bit muted. Uh, there's a lot of uh, like mute browns, a ton of gray in here, um, but it's pretty diversified if I do say so myself. Now this is the Hulk dice. They have a lot of repeat characters when it comes to Marvel, but uh, in the past they just did different colors but kept the same symbol. I am partial to this Hulk dice. I think this is a better decision and a really cool one. And of course you have other ones, uh, you have the Wasp here, it's kind of translucent. Uh, you have some S.H.I.E.L.D. characters that are going to be making appearances in here. And you might even have some Guardians of the Galaxy, but I don't want to ruin it too much for you. There is another type of character introduced into to this world when it comes to super rares. They'll all get into that a little later. But this is uh, the whole dice uh, repertoire that you get in the Age of Ultron. Now let's go to the cards and give you a feel exactly what this set has in store. Okay, so these are the basic cards that you start off with. You did see a little bit of them in the picture of the starter set, so I'm not gonna get into them too much, though I am gonna get into the ones that I like the most. Uh, this one here, Nasty Plots, has Thanos on it. This one, draw two, uh, two dice and put them in your prep area. Whenever you can draw dice and start to roll multiple dice, more than just the four, I am in love with. Uh, there are a whole bunch of ones, though I'm gonna more focus on what changes. Uh, so yeah, we'll get a symbol. This is uh, one that has teamwork in here. Now this is one of the new abilities. Uh, this is kind of like the hero uh, combination that was in uh, one of the other Mar Marvel sets when you have two of the same um, hero that has that text. It works together. This one's a bit different though because you have to have teamwork and uh, uh, on the character and the affiliation of said character and it's going to do something special. And this one says search your bag for the character dice and field it at level one for free. Uh, teamwork, repeat this effort for another affiliate uh, character. So it's all going to be about affiliation. There are quite a bit of uh, aff different factions when it comes to this set, but we'll get into that uh, in a second here. Uh, these are the other ones here um, when it comes to basic actions, and these are kind of like the equipment. You have the shield uh, helicopter carrier, and this one, again, is uh, it's a decent one. Um, it says target character dice you control gets plus two attack and plus two defense at uh, and the Avenger icon this turn. So basically it's just gonna buff stuff. Of course, Atrix is gonna make it even more powerful. And you got Loki Scepter, that's another one. I, I gotta tell you, 
I'm getting tired of Loki. He's showing up way too much, and I've never been a Loki fan, so, nah, whatever. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get on to the characters. So the first one that we have here is an X-Men, uh, the Beast. I like this Beast Dice, and he's a pretty cool character. He's a 3-2, kind of small, but he's cheap to bring out. When Beast attacks, he gets plus one defense. If Beast is KO'd while attacking, gain two life, so pretty cool. But I love Daredevil. I've always been a Daredevil fan, and when the show came out, I was pretty psyched. That's why he is in this set. I don't know if he has too much to do with the Age of Ultron, but whatever. Uh, Daredevil can't be blocked by mass characters, and uh, when field, fielded, KO an enemy mass character dice. So he's not really strong, but he is cheap. He's a 3-3 on his final. Okay, now Odin makes his appearance. A pretty uh, strong character when it comes to defense. He's a 5-8. Uh, Odin can't be blocked by characters with lower defense than him, so that's gonna happen quite often because he is a strong defensive character, but pretty expensive to bring out. Um, again, I don't have every card in here. I have quite a bit, though, enough to show you. Uh, Pepper Potts comes into play with uh, Iron Man. Again, there's a lot of Iron Man cards coming in uh, to the uh, world of Dice Master via other sets. Why not put Pepper Potts in here? She's going to work best with Iron Man. Pepper Potts can't attack when Pepper Potts is KO'd. Search your bag for an Iron Man dice and field it at level one. So again, she's the assistant. Of course, she's going to help out um, Tony Stark. So now we're going to move on to the shield characters. Now, uh, Phil Collins makes his appearance. I'm kind of partial. I like this character. He's pretty cheap, and of course, he's going to be buffing shield. Uh, when Phil Collins is active, your sidekicks ha and shield agents, character characters get plus one, plus one. That's pretty powerful. If you're running a uh, sidekick deck, you can fill it up with shield characters. All of these ones here are pretty cheap, so you can make a fast deck. Almost kind of like a goblin fast charge magic deck of, of sorts. And then simply just have a, uh, shield agents. Uh, I like their dice quite a bit though. It's uh, a blue on white, which is really crisp and vibrant. One of my favorites. Uh, and they're very simple and cheap, a 2-4 to bring out. And this one says, when fielded, give another uh, shield agent plus one uh, attack and defense until the end of the turn again. You can really buff up big shield characters and sidekicks with these characters. Nick Fury comes in again. Um, when you have three or more active A characters, Nick Fury can't be blocked. So um, again, he's part of the Avengers, so he's both affiliations, which I think is pretty cool. He's not very strong, but a two, what is that? Five isn't too shabby at a three cost. So uh, let's move on from the sh uh, shield characters, I think, or maybe there are more. Yes, there's one more, Maria Hill. So she's cool dice, green's always nice. Uh, again, kind of weaker, but very cheap. Again, she's gonna be actually helping out your uh, shield characters or just bringing out stuff to help you in the long run. The first time you draw Maria Hill in a turn, you may roll a different shield character from your use pile and place it in your reserve. So not necessarily shield characters, but definitely works well in a shield deck. All right, so those are the uh, shield characters. Now um, let's go on to the female Thor. So there are a lot of Avengers in this. Of course, there has to be Age of Ultron. That's kind of the thing. But I like that they went with the female one. Uh, she's pretty strong, a 6'8", uh, pretty pricey all around. Um, prevent all non-combat damage to Thor. Uh, and this one here, every time Thor takes damage, reduce that damage by one. So. That could be helpful in the long run. Uh, now, Iron Man makes another appearance. Uh, but yeah, his dice is pretty cool this time around. I like it. The other ones are kind of blase, whatever. But Iron Man, again, his, gets plus one uh, for each opposing active villain, and it's kind of the same thing. Uh, he is a 6-4. Uh, this is decent art for him, so there you go. Uh, and then Black Widow makes another appearance. Her d dice change uh, in this set again, as well as Hawk, uh, Hawkeye. If they're going to make repeat um, appearances, I like the fact they're going to change up the dice. Uh, it wasn't uh, necessarily the worst thing that they kept them the same in the last few sets, but I like that they changed them this time. Uh, now, Black Widow is going to be cheap, and she's going to get out there and really start fighting. Black Widow can only be blocked by sidekicks. That's interesting. I've not seen that happen before. When fielded, choose a character dice. That die cannot block this turn. So she's going to kind of keep people at bay and be cheap 
at the same time. Uh, Hawkeye, again, is cheap as well. He is a 3-4, but again, he has a teamwork. When you feel a character who shares uh, in affiliation with Hawkeye, deal one damage to your opponent. So teamwork is going to be essential if you're trying to build that type of deck. You're going to want a lot of teamwork characters in there. Well, I mean, more of teamwork with the same affiliation, because that has to be, they go hand in hand. So I'm not going to go over all of his cards, but there he is. Uh, Captain America, I like this art here. Again, he changes his uh, dice up as well. He is a 5-5 on his very final one. While active, each time you take a non-combat damage, deal one damage to an opponent. It's kind of pinging people, ping, ping, ping. I think that's really interesting. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them again. I'm just kind of picking and choosing. Hulk comes into play. Um, my favorite dice, yeah, that's my favorite dice of this set. And he is an 8-8, just a brute. And he has Overcrust on one of his cards, my favorite ability. Uh, so Overcrush is on that one too. Uh, teamwork, this is my favorite one here uh, when it comes to Hulk. When you field a character who shares the affiliation with the Hulk, Hulk gains Overcrush until the end of turn. He's a bit cheaper instead of just having it permanently. So this is a way to kind of get around that uh, pricey Hulk uh, thing. So Hulk can only attack alone. So he's pretty cheap here, but I mean, you got an 8-8. If you just put him out, he can do some big damage. So Hyperion actually makes an appearance too. He's got a pretty cool dice though. It's kind of hard to read. Um, he is a 6-6 six, six on his final level. Not too pricey. Uh, he's another teamwork here. He deals two damage to villain dice when affiliations uh, match his. Once per turn when Hyporion is blocked by a villain, double his attack. So that could come in handy. Spider-Woman makes her appearance. Uh, and She's got a pretty cool dice. Um, she's pretty cheap. Uh, and she is a 3-5, which isn't too shabby, uh, but 2 to bring onto the field. I think that's kind of pricey when it comes to a cheaper character. Um, but Spider-Woman can't be blocked by character dice with the print fielding cost of 0. So those cheap people that just come right out, well, she's not going to be blocked by them. Uh, and she's got teamwork as well. When fielded, uh, deal 2 damage to 1 opposing character dice with the printed field of 0. So she's all about the uh, goose egg about uh, in this one here. I only have one of Captain Universe. Uh, pretty cool dice. Uh, not too shabby when it comes to price, but pretty pricey for a 7-7 seven, seven at the end. Uh, when fielded, draw and roll a dice. If you roll a character face on an Avenger dice, this ca uh, the, this Captain Universe dice gets plus two this turn. Place the dice roll from the uh, affected uh, this effect into your prep area. So you kind of essentially gain a dice and hopefully you're able to get two to her attack. Um, so, uh, Giant Man, uh, he's going to make his appearance. I love Ant-Man, so Giant Man is one of the same. And he's pretty cheap um, for a three cost and a two to bring on the field. A seven seven's not too shabby. I, I would play him in my deck if I made a Age of Ultron deck. Uh, this one here, uh, once each turn, when one of your other characters is KO, spin this character up one level. So, very thematic. Wasp comes into play. Uh, she's pretty cheap too, and she's not really that strong. Three, four. Uh, your opponent can't target Wasp with global abilities. That's pretty cool. And she has a global ability herself, and that one here as well. So Captain Marvel also makes uh, an appearance. She is pretty cheap as well. Uh, a 6-7, not too shabby, but a 3 cost to bring out. So you might think twice about putting her in your deck if you want to make a fast one. Uh, when Captain Marvel deals combat damage, draw a dice and put it into your prep area. So a uh, theme about uh, the Age of Ultron feels like you're drawing a lot of dice and putting it in your prep area to set up for future turns, and uh, I wouldn't complain there. Uh, so we're going to move on. Um, now this is one of the favorite things for me in this set is the Guardians of the Galaxy. I love the movie, and uh, I would lie to say to you that I've read a lot before that movie, but that really encapsulated me. It's kind of like Star Wars uh, versus uh, superhero, well, mixed with superheroes, and I loved it. Uh, so you got uh, Gamora. She's got a pretty cool dice. Uh, it's uh, kind of not clear, uh, but it's a four-five. Uh, she KOs each uh, enemy dice. She deals combat uh, damage too. So that's kind of like a poison effect. If you ever play Hearthstone, that's gonna remind you of that. And then Moon Dragon, we didn't see much of her in the movie, I don't think, but she has a teamwork and she has a 4 6, and she's relatively cheap when it comes to that. And she's going to work with Avengers and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You, seeing two different affiliations in these cards is pretty cool. I haven't seen that much off uh, in the other sets. So, and one of the coolest characters, uh, uh, Groot. 
is here. He is a 3-7, so of course his defense is going to be really high. And uh, if Groot would be KO'd, instead return him to the field zone at level 1. Super fantastic. If you need a defensive wall, well, you got Groot. And that's very thematic. See, they got another card there. I don't have his rare. I don't have a lot of rares from here. And then you got Starhawk. He is an Avenger and a Guardian of the Galaxy. And he's got a teamwork. Only have one of him. Uh, he's got a cool dice. He's a 5-5. Five, five, not too uh, pricey to bring out. When Philly, the character who shares, shares their affiliation as Starhawk, gets plus one attack, plus one defense. Not great, but not terrible either. All right, so Star Lord's in the picture. I like that art there, and his dice is pretty cool, but it's a bit muted. Um, and he is a 5-4, of course, and uh, he's got teamwork. And while Star Lord is active, all of your attacking guardians characters get plus one attack and plus one defense. So you can make a whole bunch of different affiliations from this set, which is really interesting. Uh, Rocket Raccoon is, of course, going to be cheap, but he's going to pack a punch. So his defense isn't too high. It's two, but his attack is four. So you can keep getting uh, Rocket out there and start blowing stuff up. Uh, it was this one blam murder you i love the flavor text on him when a rock uh, rocket raccoon attacks with a at least one other character he gets plus two attack and uh, yeah, I, I would say that's thematic uh, i'm not going to go over too much more but it keeps going on with that kind of pattern all right so now we're on to the villains and of course ultron's going to be in here what's age of ultron without ultron um and he is a powerful character at seven seven and you can get him at a five cost if you really want when field it captured opposing character dice with the field of uh cost of goose egg and capturing's in this set yeah don't worry and uh yeah we're not, not going to say any more of ultron you know he basically does stuff uh so red skull comes in here i'm going to cover that one up because you don't get to see it yet so red skull is decent he's pretty cheap he's a uh was it five five on his last level if uh red skull is ko'd your opponent chooses either red skull deals two damage to your opponent or you gain two life that's interesting i didn't think red skull would give life but he will take it now i'm going to go into the only ultra rare that i got in this set and that is red skull zombie so in this set they introduce zombies which is pretty cool you can only have one of them and you have to have the dice so i mean whatever uh, but when zombie mode comes in you ko all red skulls even your opponents if that happens to be that and while active opponents cannot attack with more than one psychic per turn captain america can't attack either that's pretty interesting uh that's the only zombie Zombie I got in this set, but I'm showing a picture of all the other zombies right now. Look at them. Pretty cool. I would like them, but well, whatever. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to go on because this is running on a little bit too long. Vision is in the set again, but he is a villain this time. Makes total sense. Uh, the Ultron uh, drones are in the set as well. There's another super rare for them. I'm not going to go over that too much because, again, this video is running on a bit too long. And there's Loki again. I'm not even going to give Loki the time of day because I'm tired of him showing up in Dice Master. Uh, but uh, what Kang Kang yeah that's how you say his name I like his dice uh, kind of purple and blue pretty cool uh, Bucky comes into play he's an interesting character he's not too powerful but he does uh, buff himself up and he's unblockable and doubles uh, Bucky's attack sometimes so he could be essential in your deck Thanos comes into play it's pretty cool because um, Guardians of the Galaxy why not have Thanos and his glove is on his dice pretty cool dice Thanos costs two fewer to buy while you have less than 11 life so that would be kind of cool to have him at five come out as a nine nine huh yeah he's powerful so uh baron zemo of course is going to come into the world as well uh he's going to get plus two attack for each action dice so uh, you know whatever <laughs> so uh, enchantress also comes into uh, the world of dice masters as well and she's going to be really focused on trying to take out those avengers she is really pricey but she's a six six and her dice is pretty cool so this is the last few cards that we have uh we have her here with a three six and we have wonder man so his dice is pretty cool and he's a uh what a four or five and pretty easy to get out so those are all the cards uh sorry about the video running a little long there but now let's get into my opinion what i actually think of this set let's go 
So Age of Ultron, the Marvel set that just keeps on giving. Uh, there, this, again, this is the third one. And uh, I'm going to be giving this one a 92. And that's a pretty good score. Uh, not the highest that I've done so far. I would say so far the ones that I've reviewed, and this would probably fall in the lower half. Uh, and out of all the Dice Master sets so far, this is not one of my favorites. But a good one because it is simple. It adds just a little bit like the teamwork and still brings in a lot of the old effects like Overcrest that I like capturing all this stuff and it introduces some new characters even though the repeats come back in but they have different dice and I think that was a good call. Now um, some of the things that I, I think that this falters on um, I think it is a bit too simple but that isn't a huge hindrance because this is a good set to introduce new people to um, relatively. Uh, not one of the ones that I would just jump right into, but it's still something that they like Ultron uh, particularly. You can have somebody play this one and still get the hang of it, but a lot of the old terminology is going to be brought into this and they might be confused. So uh, not the greatest starter, but definitely something that you could start on if you're a big fan of the Ultron movie or just the Ultron series in general. Um, but again, 92 is where I'm set uh, setting this one at here. Not one of my favorite ones, but and that's why I don't have too much of it. Uh, but definitely a set that I'm glad to have, and I would be upset if I didn't. The dice are pretty clear, yet muted. There isn't not there isn't just one prominent co color, which sometimes happens in these sets, which I think is a neat one. The graphic art, uh, the art style on the Age of Ultron cards are ripped from a lot of different things and genres of that specific world, which is a good thing. Um, I do wish they would stop putting Loki in the deck. I'm tired of Loki at this point. I have enough of Loki stuff to deal with. Why do you keep doing it? Well, whatever. That's Marvel. Uh, that's Dice Master's prerogative to do so. Uh, that's really my only gripe. I like the Age of Ultron set. Not my favorite one to come around, but something that I'm definitely happy to have in my collection. So, Thank you so much for watching today's video, and thank you so much, WizKids, for continuing to support this channel with the review copies. I bought all this, but they have uh, supplied me with some of the future ones to come in the future that you'll see. I just used future about five times there. Okay, well, I forgot how to count this. Probably just like three times. Future, future. There it is. All right, well, I'm going to pretty much wrap this video uh, up, guys. Thank you again for watching. Until the next time that I see you. Have a great rest of your day and a great time with all that you play. I've been Dave, and you heard it here on the Game Vine. Dice Master goodness. Keep bringing it on. I love it. Bye, everybody.